you know, you really have to work hard in school. You don't want to grow up and be uneducated and a homeless person like them. I mean, there's like stabbings and, and assaults all the time. Can't you go somewhere else to eat? I mean, somewhere else other than the, the downtown east side? The downtown east side faces complex socioeconomic issues that require ongoing resources to address. Let's make a visit to Employ to Empower, a nonprofit organization helping the cause. Hi, my name is Carissa, and I'm the community contribution lead at Employ to Empower. What Employed and Power focuses on is entrepreneurship. And the reason being is when you're somebody who experiences work and social barriers, it's really tough to work a traditional nine to five. Um, Employed and Power just received funding to hire a counselor on the team. So I'm the first person that's ever been in this role. Individuals start off with a either a business idea already or the potential for a business idea. So we have an ideation course where people can come in and start to think about, okay, what would that even look like to start my own business? We would go over confidentiality first and just let them know that I'm here to be a mental health support. And I try to make it clear from the get-go that I can't really help with their business idea. They don't have background in business, but I can absolutely help them on their journey. And the way that I always frame it to folks is that um, you know, if you start to feel overwhelmed in this process, or you feel like there's too much on your plate, or you're finding yourself pushing up against some resistance when it comes to your business journey, come see me and we will work on that. In our organization, we've met so many brilliant entrepreneurs. Um, and when I say just this brilliance, there's such diverse talent. And it, that's what I feel is very much missed in the media. Over here is a ribbon skirt. I'm gonna open it up for you. So this is made by entrepreneur Alexa, who is um, a Métis artist who works with a lot of beadwork. She uh, makes her own kind of earrings as well as these ribbon skirts, which are traditional garments of Métis culture. And as you can see within the print as well, it, it pays homage to the um, beadwork as well. There is a, a stigma that exists about not only the downtown east side, but individuals who experience work and social barriers. You know, people here struggle, like there's no getting around that. It is a community that struggles and they face a lot of different barriers, but they've also kind of been pigeonholed. What's missing is the human experiences that are worthy of being seen and validated and understood and supported. Right, we have expectations of what our community is supposed to look like, but then we don't help those that are the most vulnerable. And then, um, expect them to have this autonomy that they don't have the ability to have because they can't access the resources. I will show you here is Yvonne Mark. Something that stopped her from going to school was just her access to a computer. And with that lack of access to a computer, lacked her ability to use a computer. And so she was actually denied the ability to go to a certain college because of that. But of course, that didn't stop her from writing and so in this issue of Megaphone, she was able to self-publish one of her favorite poems, which is called A Letter to Myself. When we think, when we see graffiti in neighborhoods, oftentimes that is seen as negatives. You know, it paints a negative light on the neighborhood. But as well, thinking about individuals in the downtown Eastside community who might who may like lack access to technology. It is a communication that somebody within their community is now passed and a way of mourning their loss. You definitely get a sense of community. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about folks that live in the downtown east side is you really have this lovely sense of community. And so when somebody is grieving, the entire community is grieving. And so when we are you know, faced with things like the opioid crisis, it's really important to get real with what's, what's that that's doing to the people that are dying of the opioid crisis, but also what's such a, what, that, what that's doing to all the loved ones too. The artwork over here is made by Deirdre. She was actually our first entrepreneur. This is one of her pieces called the Hearts of Honor. So what they are is she connects with the individual who may have lost somebody and uses their old garments, their old clothing, old blankets, and creates these beautiful hearts as mementos. People we're working with are, are human beings. Like I know this past year, we actually lost um, 
uh, two entrepreneurs, two members of our program, and I was fortunate enough to go to the celebration of life. And it was so so beautiful to be able to go there and to not not only be there um, as somebody who was very close to the individual, but be someone from Employed in Power. And then there was someone from Eastside Work, someone from Binners, someone from Mission Possible. And I feel like that really spoke to the strength and the connection that we all have of nonprofits. It's not just business, we're not just social services, we are people that truly care and really bond and create really solid relationships with um, the individuals in the community. Um, you know, I was told don't go to that neighborhood, it's very dangerous, it's very scary. And so if you grow up with these notions and these ideas of, of what is uh, scary and what is um, you know, a place that you shouldn't go to, maybe do some of that internal work and see where that's coming from. Many of our entrepreneurs, but one entrepreneur that I think of the most is Mark, who he's lived all over the world and he always talks about how the downtown he said is his favorite place because of the community. All he knows is him and his friends in the community want is someone to, when you pass by, look them in the eyes. Look them in the eyes and say, hello, how was your day? Um. People are people, and uh, every single human life is a valid human life. So even if somebody is living in a way that you don't understand or that you don't, maybe you don't even agree with, right? It just makes no sense to you. A person is a person and their life has meaning and their life has purpose and their life has value. And you'll find that, especially when you get the opportunity to learn about people's stories and the intricate lives that they've lived, um, you'll find that validity yourself. 